got another product here that I was shopping around and checking out my options. Try not to go too cheap, not too expensive. Um, but I could not find one photo of this installed on my WR250X. No pictures from the manufacturer, no pictures from the sellers, no Google, nothing. Could not find it installed. And so that's the only reason I'm making this video. Otherwise, I would just install it. But what is it? It is a Moose Racing XCR luggage rack. Um, I've already opened it, but honestly, this is no joke. Um, first of all, the exterior shipping is from um, Cycle Gear, which I'm a big fan of now. They've been hooking me up with a uh, big fan of great deals, great sales staff, and kind of conveniently located for me. But this is this is the Moose products right here. But this is really how it was shipped. Let's see if I can get that open. Um, really poorly packed. I mean, it looks like they maybe tried to wrap the main rack uh, in foam, but holy geez, this is, let's see, there's some hardware and some instructions. I'll get to that in a minute. That's a joke. Two brackets. Uh, that's another reason I liked about this. Um, I did not have to drill holes in my fender. I know the fender is replaceable, but it's over a hundred bucks or a new one. And I just don't like to do permanent things to my cars or my vehicles, but this is a is the rack but again the, the reason i got this is one it looks really great it's kind of just gonna fit the shape of the bike but i also uses brackets instead of um normally you'd see four holes that just go into the frame yeah that holds weight but this one's advertised to hold uh 40 pounds which is, i think that's greater than most of the lower level ones uh quality wise i'll try to make this video quick quality wise i thought it's all stamped but in the corners, I guess the geometry just doesn't allow stamping, but looks like they welded it. If you look close enough, you can see where they ground their welds before they powder coated it. But even though it's poorly packed, um, doesn't look like there's any. There's a couple of abrasions. There's a, some crappy welding right there. Uh, there's some abrasions, but uh, nothing, nothing to complain about other than wow, I, I, what crappy packaging. Here's the other part of uh, kind of. Oh, crappy. Uh, hardware. Let's check the hardware. Um, none of this is stainless. Uh, I don't know if time permits. I might powder coat these. And but first, I just gotta get it installed. But check this out. These are the instructions. Come on, my old ass eyes can't read these. Uh, let's see. I've read it. What's even funnier is there is a... Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, here's a funny part. You can't read. I can't zoom in, but it says, Remove the bolts in the rear of the sum frame as shown in the image on the next page. Next page? Come on. I know this rack wasn't the most expensive rack, but it's definitely not the cheapest. But, lucky for me, Dennis Kirk... Uh, which is a reputable brand. Uh, Dennis Kirk has this install sheet on their website. So thank you, Dennis Kirk. But again, I couldn't even get these instructions on Moose Racing website. This uh, product, let's see, what is the product number? 5510-0267. Uh, it's not even available on their website. I mean, you can buy it. You can see it. But you sure as hell ain't going to get work instructions. Work instructions. Um, after all, it's a pretty simple install, but I write work instructions for a living, and this just drives me fucking nuts. Uh, again, hardware is not stainless. God, that's a lot of stainless hardware to recover. Maybe I have some scrap bolts in my, but yeah, these nylon spacers, let's see. Oh, that's, these spacers are going to go, uh, not the end of the world, but come on, man, you can get better spacers than that. This is going to be a little slappy. Again, I'm going to probably dig through all my nuts and bolts, see what I can get. But I'm, like, I'm going to spare you guys the install. I'll just hopefully have a video of the final product. Um, I do have some issues to overcome. I have I re repurposed my bracket to tuck all this stuff in. This is not OEM. Well, it's OEM parts, but not OEM install. But 
Uh, there's some wire tucking I have to do under here, so that bracket's going to go inside where I'm utilizing some stuff. So I'm going to spare you <laughs> the the pain of installing this, and uh, maybe I might actually go buy some stainless hardware. Ah, uh, starting off in this, uh, just starting off looking at the hardware. Uh, this is an M6 by one pitch. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, the longer bolts are M6. These little guys are quarter inch 28, quarter inch 20, standard size. Um, it says in the parts list, but still, why are you mixing hardware? Uh, lucky for me, the head bolts or the heads are, oh God, uh, 11 inch or 11 millimeter wrench will work with the heads. But still, that means I got to, I don't know, why do you, why do you do this? Uh, Moose does advertise this as 12 gauge, which is roughly about a tenth of an inch. Uh, this comes out to about 0.112, maybe? That's about a tenth plus powder coat, so that's good. So, first step, putting those bolts in. Again, this won't be a full install. I'm just going over the little details. Uh, these are the longer bolts that go through, and they're going to get spacers underneath. Um... They didn't give they didn't give enough washers to go around. I mean, they there's enough for partsless, but by uh, they shouldn't have, they should give me some flange bolts. But I dug up some washers for here because otherwise these hex heads are gonna be digging right into the frame. But uh, oh well, I got I got parts. Uh, this bracket sticking out is not normal. This normally goes a step forward and it brings this whole light kit way out here like a big old whale tail. But so far my install my custom custom. Uh, tail light install it looks like it's gonna work um, the spacers will interfere oh, excuse the mess uh, let's see can I find it way up oh you're not gonna see but where these bolts are coming to there are some nuts welded to the tail bracket um, I am compensating for that depth I am uh, uh, what do you call it? I hollowed out the um, spacers with a step drill these should tuck into those nuts. Um, I will, let's see, the tail, the tail will be, you know, down a little bit, maybe another tenth of an inch. So if that's, if that doesn't work out, I'll come back, I'll trim these down, or I'll go buy some at Ace Hardware and trim them down, or maybe even find some, I don't know, they're, they're not going to hold a load, but, you know, they're, we'll see. Here's another thing with, uh, Parts that they give you this bracket's gonna go up up in there um, there for some reason in the diagram they put washers between these spacers and something but no washers up in here I'm gonna keep going with that but you got this nice powder coat finish and underneath you're gonna see nylocks um, right there is that a nut yeah, those are looks like a regular nut, but they're nylocks. Um, I dug through my parts, my parts, and I do have some uh, flange flange nuts, so I won't need washers. And these have the uh, teeth on them, so they should bite. Um, doesn't mention anything about Loctite. Uh, well, I guess that's what nylocks are for, but these should hold. If not, oh my god, it's it's fine. I don't ride that much. I stand corrected. Uh, one of these brackets. It's going to go right here, and since I relocated the tail bracket, this is actually in the way. So, I guess I'm going to have to put the tail bracket back and figure something else out in the future for a tail tuck. So, I did move the tail bracket back to its original position. And, uh, you know what? After all said and done... Uh, it's not too bad. All right, this actually raises, uh, I guess earlier the plate was a little bit more over here. Some people's concerns were I was going to hit the plate while I'm off-roading, but not likely. Um, anyway, it's not too bad. Uh, you kind of see. Uh, but the thing, I, as I'm doing it, so when Moose designed this, they must have assumed, they must know there was going to be a nut here. So why did they give spacers... They're just going to kind of like, I don't know, kind of just rest right into that nut. It's kind of gross, but I'm so, so I'm kind of glad kind of hollow these out. 
not only that, it helps me install everything because I can just snap it in there. But I don't know. Uh, we'll see how it settles if I, I'll go buy some spacers. Well, here's something. Uh, this is kind of just loosely installed. Uh, the nylon spacers, even though it's been hogged out to make up for the welded nut on the bracket, um, doesn't raise it enough. Um, I don't know if you can see this. Well, um, I got it somewhat installed. So remember this, I have this spacer hogged out to make up for the nut that's welded onto the tail bracket here. Um... The luggage trash bracket hits, God, you could probably get a sheet of paper in there, not even two to three thousandths. It's, you can see a little light. Anyway, so I need to go either trim these spacers down or buy a spacer. And I don't want to ruin this until I bought something. So I went to Ace and $21 later, I got hardware. Um, here's the original spacer. You can see where uh, I hogged it out to make up for that welded nut, but I got steel spacers. A little, a little shorter, but I'm thinking that might work. We're gonna give that a try. And then, uh, as I was there, I was thinking, there's nothing. I don't know if you can see in the graphic. There's nothing really holding this. Uh, it's gonna hold a weight down. Spacer is gonna hold it together up, but there's nothing to um, uh, control side fumbling. Uh, I just feel like these spacers. These nylon spacers are so sloppy. Um, you're, I'm going to torque them. They're going to get squished. They're going to get crunched. Uh, the day I put my leg over the over the bike and hit it, it's going to just bend. Uh, something's going to give. There's no. There's not a lot of side strength to this thing. Is that what it's called, side strength? So for the front spacers, again, they are a little shorter as well than the nylon. But I'm thinking since I have to raise this one up to get it off the muffler, this one should hopefully get me right about that same so i don't know if i have to hog these out i might just god this just drives me nuts that there's a welded nut on the tail bracket and this is going to just be resting in there um gives no not a lot of strength on the side stuff but anyway oh and i also got these and nuts for uh you can't see the diagram for these side nuts why would you want go through all the trouble to powder coat this thing black and then you're giving me Shiny silver hardware. I meant, god dang it. You know, spend a few extra bucks on hardware, Moose. Come on. This is a loose fit. Or no, it's tightened up. But this is with the, uh, the extra spacers I bought. Uh, the gap in the back is pretty level with the seat. And again, these are my spacers, not the cheap nylon ones they give you. Um, it's, I thought it was pretty high before I put the seat on, but now it's below the seat, if you will. But as you come out here, it doesn't look like it, but the space is really small here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here. I'm going to hog out these little spacers to clear those welded nuts. Um, spacers in the back have welded nuts as well, but I feel like it's not as crucial since the length of this screw is pretty short as opposed to this I don't know how long that screw is, but it's long enough that I gotta give this a bump. Something's gonna bend. And so a wider base or hogging out these spacers will also bring the tail up a little bit or the back end a little bit and hopefully give me a solider, a solider, a more solid base to attach to. Also, I thought I was smart. I went and bought some more automotive bolts, but um, you gotta use short ones. Or you hit the fender here on this side uh, god I am gonna bring it up a little bit so this might be an issue as well but to me not that problem I do have some shorter automotive bolts I could probably use here other than those shiny metal ones let's get everything together so I do they are now hogged out uh, I tried fitting them they don't go all the way over that welded nut because the welds are just there's no way this would get too thin but uh, at least this will give me a little more rise in the in the seat and figure the nut is actually going to be tucked in there so it'll be a little stronger than nylon just sitting on a welded nut. Well, it's finally installed. That's what it looks like. 
Uh, God, that space. I tried to raise it, and I think I raised it too much. But you know what? I like it more that way. Um, because it clears <laughs> that muffler way better. A um, few points to notice. Let's see. Uh, hardware. I didn't want silver screws. I bought automotive bolts, but they were too long, so I had these little ones. Uh, M6s, I think. So I replaced those. Uh, one, because they got the washers and they just hold on better. Uh, underneath, I went with some... They're not flange nuts. They're actually nuts with a, with a slip washer uh, permanently attached to it. Um, captivated by there. Those are probably off of Volkswagen or something, but those are off my car somewhere. And the back, I didn't have any more flange nuts because I didn't want those nylocks, so I didn't want these acorns. I don't know if you can tell those are acorns. I just wanted it to be a little more decent looking than crappy silver hardware. Um, also, they say it's only rated for 45 pounds. Um, you won't be able to see, but those little brackets flex a little bit, so you definitely don't want... You definitely don't want to be putting a lot of weight. This is just for a little bit of luggage. I was hoping to be a little sturdier. I guess if I was brave enough, I would probably try to make these brackets. Um, I couldn't make them that nice, but I could definitely make them tougher, more rigid. Maybe build some gussets or something. I don't, I don't know what to do, but I don't think I'm going to fidget more with this. Looks good. It's on. And also... The seat goes off and on with the rack. It doesn't get in the way. Makes it... I swore that earlier this was level with the seat. It's now a little higher. I don't know what happened. Maybe these aluminum spacers I put up here kind of smashed their way in. I got to keep an eye on all this hardware. Nothing's Loctited for now. Not a big believer of Loctite. Um, anyway, I'll just keep an eye on it. But yes, the seat does come off and on. Easily, you can't really yank on it because your knuckles will get caught back here, but it's kind of neat. You might be able to tuck some stuff in there if you ever need something stashed. But anyway, that is the XCR Moose Rack for the WR250. I do like it. Nothing else like it out there. The rest of them are chunky and big and it's just a flat piece of aluminum. Then you got to cut holes in your fender. And that's about it. Like, again, this is way nicer and not terribly expensive, but to me, it's not an easy and so if you don't have spare hardware, you don't know what you're doing, this is not gonna be that easy of a task. So, hope that was useful. Oh, you even get to see the cute Yamaha. All right, thanks. Hope you enjoy or learn something from this.